And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to do a show featuring pumpkin. And I know many of you think, how can you cook with pumpkin beyond pumpkin pie or carving the pumpkin? But we're not going to make pumpkin pie, but we're going to make three recipes using pumpkin. Pumpkin is a very healthy ingredient for you. It's full of vitamins and minerals and fiber, and it's just delicious for you to eat. Now, first thing I got to do is grab my butter out of the microwave. I just melted it, half a stick of butter, melted for 30 seconds, and it just melts perfectly. Then I'm going to take one cup of flour, all purpose, one cup of cornmeal, some baking powder, and some sugar, because I like my cornbread to be a little bit sweet. Now I'm going to take two eggs, going to crack them in this bowl, and I'm going to go ahead and beat them just a little bit to break up the yolks. And I had a little salt in that baking powder too. I'm going to let that, that's cool enough. Then I'm going to add my eggs to my butter mixture. And I'm going to whisk these ingredients together. If you have a sifter, you can use the sifter. I just, I don't have a sifter. I just use a whisk and it does just as good. Then we're going to talk a little bit about pumpkin. Now, you do not need to buy a pumpkin. A sh and, and let, me, let me just stop right there for just a second. The pumpkins that you carve are not the breed of pumpkin that we eat. What we eat typically are the little small ones and they're called sugar pumpkins. You can buy those and seed them and peel them and cook it down if you want to, or you can go to the store and you can buy whole pumpkin. Now, I do want to point something out here. In, and most of the time you will find this in the baking aisle with the, um, you know, like apple pie filling and those kinds of things where you find flour and sugar. That's where I typically find it. But there are going to be two things there and you need to pay attention. One will say pumpkin pie mix. That is not what you want. You want the one that says 100% pure pumpkin. This is the sugar pumpkins already done for you. There's nothing in here but pumpkin. Convenience and it just is so much easier. And for this recipe we're going to need about a cup of pumpkin. So I'm going to take my pumpkin and I'm going to scrape it into the wet mixture. And then I'm going to take my whisk and I'm going to whisk it together slowly just to incorporate that pumpkin into the egg and the butter. I adore pumpkin and I will say my favorite pie is pumpkin pie. My grandmother, my mother's mother, when I was just a little girl, she always made the best pumpkin pies. I can remember just being a little thing, seven, eight, nine years old, and going to her house and getting the pumpkin pie that she would make. I loved it. Take your dry ingredients, make a well in the middle, and just drop in your wet ingredients, and then stir them together. And this will make a batter. Is anybody else a messy stirrer? You can do this in your uh, stand mixer if you want to, or you could use a hand mixer. I just do it by hand. I don't always like to pull out those big 
um, appliances if I don't need to. Wipe my finger off here. I am a messy cook. And I bet some of you are too. But that's okay. The thing in this that you want to be careful of is make sure that you do get the 100% pumpkin. If your mixture seems a little bit thick, and this does, you can add some milk and or heavy cream. Oh, come on you. Let's get out of there. I should not have used the whisk. Now I get to beat it out of the middle. But if you take it lightly, tap it. Don't do it hard. You don't want to chip your glass. And then take your spoon. You want your oven preheated to 425 degrees. You could do this in a cast iron skillet if you wanted to. I'm not, I'm going to use an eight by eight inch pan because I find this is something that most people have. A lot of people don't have cast iron. Now, I would use cast iron if you have it because it will give you this wonderful crust, but if you don't, an eight by eight inch dish sprayed with a nonstick baking spray or butter and flour. If you don't have any of that, take a little butter and then take a little flour like you would for a cake pan. Pour your batter in there and this will need to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes and then you can serve it with honey or butter, both if you want to. It's really, really good. Now let's get this in the oven, 425 degrees, about 20 or 25 minutes. And there you go, an easy recipe for a pumpkin cornbread. I'm gonna take a quick break, clean up my mess. When I come back, we're gonna get started on a pumpkin corn chowder. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, now our cornbread is in the oven, and I, and I got to ask over the break a question by one of the camera operators. It's a good point. Why could you not use this pumpkin pie mix instead of the pumpkin? Great, great question. Reason is, this is 100% pumpkin. There is nothing else added. This has pumpkin, sugar syrup, water, salt, spices, and other natural flavors. So this has things added into it, and it's much more liquidy than just the pure pumpkin puree. Now, that being said, you could use this in a pinch if you didn't, if you made a mistake and bought this instead of this. The flavor profile would be different and you would need to leave out the sugar because this already has sugar in it. And for that reason, I don't use this because I wanna control the flavorings. I wanna control the salt content, that sort of thing. So I always use 100% pumpkin. Even if I'm making a pumpkin pie, I use 100% pumpkin and add my own spices and things like that. So we're gonna get started on the next recipe, which is a pumpkin corn chowder. It is very, very good. Now I've got a soup pot there. And I got about four or five slices of bacon that I'm going to cut, cut and cook, but I'm going to cut it into little bite-sized pieces. And if I am cooking with bacon, most of the time I do this ahead of time. Instead of cooking it and then crumbling it, I go ahead and cut it up before I cook it. I, it's just something I do. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You could cook it and then crumble it. So there's our bacon, get that kind of out going. I bet many of you have never had pumpkin soup. It's really good. I love it. Oh, there's another little hint. I'm just 
is full of these today, aren't I? Um, if you have a, see how this is slippery on any surface. I just have it on my board. I never put raw meat of any kind on my wooden cutting boards. But if you take one of these little grippy pads, or if you don't have one of these, you can use the kitchen liner. You know that grip stuff that's the kitchen liner? Cut a little square of it, and look, it stabilizes your board. So I always have those handy for that purpose a little hint for you. While that's browning, we're going to slice two onions. I'm going to cut them in half and I'm going to just slice them very thinly because we're actually going to puree this so we don't need to worry about cutting it into dices because we are going to puree it. You can if you wanted to cut it into dices you could but you want about half a pound of onions, which is about two medium onions. I'm using white onions, but you could use yellow onions if you wanted. You could use red onions. Your flavor profile with your red onion would be a little sweeter, but it, it's delicious. I love red onions. Any kind of onion will do. And we're going to use our canned pumpkin. Bacon smells good. To me, when you add, when I'm going to add these onions to that bacon when it crisps up, there isn't anything that tastes any better than onions and bacon cooking. Throw in a potato and a turnip and fry that together and you got dinner for me. Gonna just get that browning up and we're going to add to our soup. We're going to add the rest of our pumpkin, about 16 ounces or so of pumpkin. We've got some flavorings in here. I've got uh, warm spices. Think warm fall spices. I've got some ground ginger, some pinta clove, dry clove, um, some allspice, some cinnamon, some nutmeg, and some salt. Just a wonderful little spice mixture. If you don't have all of those individual spices and you've got pumpkin pie spice or apple pie spice, you could substitute either one of those. About a teaspoon of that would be perfectly fine. Because a lot of people don't have the individual spices on hand. And I, that, I need to do a show on that. I need to do a program on how to make your own pumpkin pie spice or your own apple pie spice and what's interchangeable with what. Some things really are and some things aren't. It just depends. And then in here I've got uh, three cups of whole milk and then one cup of half and half. I want to add the half and half because it has that creamier, richer flavor, which is what we want for our soup. We want a very, very creamy, rich flavor. I need to grab some paper towels because we're actually going to remove the bacon from that once it browns up. And I just drain it on some paper toweling and then throw it away. Let me know. You can send me an email. Let me know what your favorite pumpkin recipes are. Or if you have any ideas or shows that you want me to do, just let me know. I had a lady message me on Facebook. Everyday Mana has a Facebook page, and it's Life Every Day with Lisa. And you can send me a message there. And she wanted me to do some fish recipes. So I'm going to be doing some of that. I'm not a big fish eater, in case you don't know that. Uh, I'm not a big seafood eater as a rule. I love shrimp and I love crab and that's about it for me. My sweet little Aaron, I got to tell you a sweet little story. Um, I had my 50th birthday last year. And for my birthday, now just a little story about me. I was born in Baltimore, Maryland. And so I grew up, when I was young, my dad and mom would take us, my sister and I, to the docks to get crabs right off the docks, the crab boats that would come in. And so we would, and then mom would steam them at home, because crabs are a big thing in Baltimore, in Maryland as a whole. She would steam them in Old Bay seasoning. So I grew up eating fresh blue crabs out of the Chesapeake Bay. So for my birthday, and I hadn't had them in, oh my goodness, 30 years or more, 
for my birthday, my sweet son, Aaron, and his daddy had a surprise for me. And they had called a local seafood shop here and had them get me some fresh blue crabs for my birthday. So I steamed them. Just a little story. Just a memory for me, a sweet little memory of my childhood. It was fun steaming those crabs and eating them was fun. I remember when I was a little girl, I'm just waiting on the bacon, um, when you, daddy would get the bushel basket of them and he would take the lid off and the crabs would come crawling out and they crawled on the floor and I would scamper up onto the table to keep them from pinching my toes. <laughs> and they did that at my house. They were running all over my floor. It was fun, little memories. Isn't it funny the things that you remember from your childhood? Anyway, let me get the bacon out of there and let that kind of be draining. Then we're gonna add our onion. We're gonna let that onion saute. I'm just gonna drain this and add the onion to this hot bacon mixture and let it be sauteing. And when I come back, we're gonna finish up the soup. I'll be back in just a second. Now our onions are softened. That's all I did was just soften the onions in the pot. And I'm gonna add some flour because we're actually going to be thickening this up. Now remember we started with a little bit of bacon drippings in the bottom of the pan. Now what the flour will do is absorb the fat from the bacon and we're gonna make a roux, which is the beginning of the sauces. You want to add the flour and let it go for just a minute until it's all absorbed. And then we're going to add some chicken broth, about a cup. We're going to stir that around. And the chicken broth will mix with the flour and the fat, the bacon drippings, and make a thicker almost a gravy, if you will. That's the basis for gravy, too. Add just a tiny bit more chicken broth. Now, here is where you will have your choice of either a standing blender or this is called an immersion blender, and it has a blade here. Better keep my hand off that. It has a blade here. I'm going to puree this. I'm going to hold it to the side, kind of hold it up at an angle. What this is going to do is chop the onions and blend them into a smoother mixture. Now, I don't mind having a little bit of texture in my soup. If you like your, your soup completely smooth, then you will need to use a blender and puree it. But I kind of like to have a little bit of texture. I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Do not use this particular tool if you are using a non-stick pan. I'm using a stainless steel pan. And I'll show you the difference here. You can see down in there, you see how it just kind of purees it? That's going to be the basis of our soup. And again, I don't mind having a little bit of texture in mine. Keep that handy. That's a great little tool to have. Now, we are gonna add our milk and half and half. Stir that together. And if you want to add your, puree it a little more with the milk in there, 
Just go back in. Just make sure you do not lift this up while it's running. This is a great little tool to have. I love my little immersion blender. We're going to add our spices. We're going to add one can of cream of corn, creamed corn. But you want to add that, that's the corn flavor. If you have some fresh corn on the cob or frozen corn, you can puree some of that in there if you don't have the creamed corn. Stir that together. Then we're going to add our pumpkin. Here's the star ingredient. I'm just using a little scoop to get it out. Which, to be honest with you, is getting on my nerves. So I'm going to switch to a spatula. I'm impatient. And I want to get all that out of there. I'm using about a pound, 16 ounces, of pumpkin. This is the whole pumpkin, not the pumpkin pie mix. This is the pumpkin. And because I have my immersion blender, I'm going to use this. If you don't have one of these, just use your whisk to blend that pumpkin into the soup. And it will become a beautiful Soup. This is a creamy soup. And you'll see how it just changes the color as that pumpkin gets in there. And that's it. It just needs to heat. Simmer for about 15 minutes. And that's it. It's done. Turn it down to simmer. Cover it up. And let it go. And that's your pumpkin corn chowder. Now, let me get my mess cleaned up here. And let's take a quick break. I'm just going to clean up my mess. And when I come back, I'll show you the cornbread and the soup, and we will eat some pumpkin. All right, now our cornbread is done, and I want to show you how to tell if cornbread or any other kind of baked good is done. Take a toothpick and insert it in the center. And if it comes out clean, you see how there's no wet batter, there's nothing on that toothpick, then that means it's done. That's an easy way to tell if a cake or cornbread or you know anything like that is done. I took it out of the pan and I've just let it cool for a minute. And you can cut it into however, squares or whatever you want. I'm going to cut it into just some squares. I like a serrated edged knife for this. And I would serve this with honey or um, butter, of course, or apple butter. Anything like that would work. And look how beautiful that is. Mm, smells so good. So there's our wonderful pumpkin cornbread. Just putting it on a plate, and then we're going to plate up our soup. Mm, 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 mm. There's our delicious cornbread. Can't wait to eat that with my favorite ways with honey. I like honey on my cornbread or biscuits or anything like that. Now, our soup is done. Just needs to simmer 10 minutes or so and then plate it up. Taste it for seasoning if you might need to add a little bit more salt. Clean up your bowl. And then we're going to garnish it with our bacon. Remember in the beginning we cooked some bacon. So we're just going to kind of garnish it with bacon. Or you could garnish it with some croutons or whatever you wanted. But I like it with bacon. So there you go. A couple of recipes using canned pumpkin. So good and so healthy. Try these recipes and I will see you next time on Everyday Manna.
thank you for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.